All Blacks 31-man squad for the Rugby World Cup has been named. Uh, as always, with all these squads that are getting named, there are some losers. But there's also, I guess, one thing we should be focusing a bit more on is all the winners, the guys who have made the cut. Uh, I'll go over the squad if you guys haven't seen it. Uh, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on who's perhaps lucky to be there, who's unfortunate to miss the cut, and any strengths or weaknesses you think uh, will be apparent in this squad. So three hookers. Pretty standard fare. Uh, I don't think anyone's game enough to go with two. Uh, Dane Coles, Liam Cotman, uh, and Cody Taylor. So that kind of makes sense. First choice Hurricanes guy. It's good that he is back uh, to full fitness because he spent a long time out of the game. Uh, Coltman had a pretty stellar year uh, in Super Rugby. Definitely played himself into the mix. And um, yeah, Cody Taylor uh, was kind of the man for the job when Coles was out. So pretty strong, I would say, for the All Blacks. Um, props, there's definitely one big name missing, uh, but the guys who are there, Laulala, Moody, Moli, Ta'avau, and Tuanga Fasi. So again, kind of five props, which seems to be the standard that all the teams are going with now. Uh, I think the Fijian squad, which I haven't done a video on yet because they're still to cut one guy, uh, still has six, so they may end up cutting one of those guys. But I mean, Tuanga Fasi and Ta'avau have both uh, played on both sides of the scrum. Moody hasn't had his best year, to be fair, so we'll see if he can kind of step things up at Rugby World Cup and uh, show us that he deserves that spot. But, um, yeah, I mean, historically, he's been a good player, so uh, as I said, we'll see if he can jump up a notch. Uh, Locks, and that's kind of an interesting one in that they've gone with Barrett, that's Scott, uh, Brody Retellick, Patrick Tu Pelotu, and uh, Sam Whitelock. So Brody Retellick's kind of the key guy who's... He's currently under an injury cloud, um, but he is one of those few players that you still take, even if he's not 100%. Uh, if he's not going to be available for that first game against the Springboks, he's still kind of worth keeping around uh, for when he comes fit, perhaps mm, pool stages or even the knockouts. But I haven't read the latest update as to how far he is coming along with his injury, but a uh, world-class player, so he's kind of got to be there. Um... Whitelock is obviously going to be a pretty reliable locking partner. Scott Barrett, despite his current suspension, will be good to go for the World Cup. And um, yeah, Tupolotu will be interesting to see how much game time he gets. You feel like he's probably the fourth choice of the four locks, but um, yeah, time will tell. Uh, loose forward Sam Kane, Luke Jacobson, who's the most inexperienced of the bunch with just one cap. Uh, Kieran Reid, who is captain. Adi Savia, Matt Todd, uh, round things out. So... There was a bit of talk as to whether Todd would make the squad. That guy seems to be always the one that gets cut when they are narrowing things down, but he has actually made it, so that guy finally gets a bit of reward for all those years he has given to New Zealand rugby. Uh, Sam Kane and Adi Savia there. My daughter is very happy about that mad top pick. Uh, Savia and Kane, along with Todd, I mean, you've got a whole lot of fetches there, so Savia's versatility and dynamism on the ball will definitely be of benefit to the All Blacks. Kieran Reid is going to be playing number eight in all the important games. And uh, Luke Jacobson, probably reward for uh, being that, that young guy who was coming through, who's had a pretty good Super Rugby season and seems to be destined for big things. So he was saying all the right things in the lead up to this uh, to this this naming and that, you know, he's been released to play Mitre 10 Cup and that he's saying, you know, he's saying the right things that he's not not getting downhearted about um, having to play Mitre 10 Cup, but he he's taken on board what the coaches said about it not being, uh, anyone being not good enough. It's just, um, you know, them seeing them get more game time. So, uh, yeah, good for him that he got chosen. Into the backs, they've gone with three half backs. There's some countries, uh, England and Australia have gone with two. South Africa and New Zealand have gone with three. So Peter Nada, Aaron Smith and Brad Webber. Brad Webber is probably feeling pretty happy that they went with three halfbacks because if they had gone with two, you can be pretty certain that uh, Brad would have got the chop. But again, stellar Super Rugby season deserves to be there. Uh, hopefully he gets some game time and adds on his two caps for the All Blacks. He's been behind uh, the other two guys for, for quite some time. Uh, Bowden Barrett and uh, Richie Moonga. It'll be interesting to see how they line up, whether it's 10 and 15 or one of them 10, one of them on the bench because... The All Blacks seem to be going down the path of the double playmakers. So Barrett at 15, but at Rugby World Cup, it may be a different story. But if all the lead-up games in recent memory are, are true, then 
it might just be Moonga at 10, Barrett at 15. Uh, midfielders, Crotty, Goodhue, ALB, and SBW, so the two acronym guys. Uh, Crotty, 30 years old, last World Cup for him. If he can remain injury free, uh, I did a video a long time ago about all those midfielders in, in New Zealand and his stats uh, in certain areas uh, are phenomenal. Uh, he's a very good defensively, very good distributor of the ball, uh, very reliable player. He's kind of a coach's dream and that when he's fit, he is ultra reliable. You know what you're going to get. He has had his issues with injury and concussion and whatnot, so fingers crossed he stays fit. Uh, good Hughes, probably in a good position and that he's the kind of regular guy who plays outside center he's always got the 13 on his back for the most part occasionally they put him into 12 but he's probably played more 13 than any of these other guys uh, combined so he may be the starting 13 but ALB can drop back there as well although you feel like he's probably better at 12 I'll leave that to the All Blacks coaches but um, either way good options uh, and Sonny Bill at 34 again another guy who's not had the kindest time with injury uh, he'll be a controversial pick for some people uh, especially given the name that's missed out, which I'll mention shortly. But um, as always, the All Blacks seem to like picking him for more than just what he can bring on the field. And he's been there and done that World Cups before, but also for that aura, that mana that, that he brings to the team and helps to lift up other players as well. So it's not just about uh, what he does on the field. He's a guy who kind of elevates uh, the entire squad. That's, what, uh, that's how the All Blacks would tell it anyway. Uh, outside backs, George Bridge. Rico Iwane, who's not had the greatest run, uh, to be fair. He did score a try on the weekend at the Mighty 10 Cup. Uh, Sever Reese, who's really had a massive turnaround from losing a contract at Connacht to making the All Blacks and going to World Cup. It's a, it's a massive turnaround for him. Uh, he's taken the opportunities and seems to be minding his P's and Q's, so good redemption story. Uh, Jordy Barrett. Again, will be one that cops a bit of flack from some people, uh, given that some of the other guys missed out. But uh, he is that utility for sure. And Ben Smith, who by his own standards hasn't been in the hottest form either. But I think given what he's given to New Zealand rugby, the fact that he's leaving, uh, he's still a pretty reliable pick. Um, again, usually that kind of coach's dream player that he'll pretty much perform consistently uh, week in, week out. So that's the squad. It's pretty experienced. There's not that many guys who are low on caps, and the ones that are low on caps are often in themselves still pretty experienced, like Coltman uh, has only got five caps, but he's almost 30, and he's been around the block a long time in New Zealand. Um, Luke Jacobson's genuine kind of young up-and-comer. Uh, Brad Webber's 28, again, been around the block, so he's not new, even if he's got limited All Blacks caps. Seba Reese, George Bridger, kind of genuine uh, new guys, and... Um, Good, he's only got nine caps, but he still feel like he's been around longer than that. Uh, guys who missed out, Owen Franks, the um, legend, I guess, in All Blacks rugby. But again, by his normal standards, he's not had his best year. I mean, he's never been the best tackler or the best ball runner. He never scores tries, but what he does do is scrum like a machine and that seems to have been a bit lower level than what we're used to which is it's his main strength and I guess if that's not there maybe that's why they've cut him uh it's one I didn't see coming I think some people might have called it Nani Laomapi a lot of people will be very disappointed to see that guy go like I said when I did the video about um New Zealand midfielders Lamapi's stats were also phenomenal in a totally different way from Crotty in that he was the individual guy who can burst, burst the line, score tries, um, you know, line breaks, tackle, bust, all that kind of stuff. But the All Blacks have always been honored to him to increase his distribution. That's kind of the area of his game they said was lacking. And I feel like he had done that. So it's still pretty harsh to see him cut, but there's only so many spots. Uh, via Fafita, you thought with Retellick's injury, maybe they would have that <clears throat> guy who can kind of cover cover lock from the loose forwards i mean i guess some of the other guys could could cover lock who are amongst that lot but fafita has kind of been there and done that so maybe likewise Hemopo, he's kind of that guy who can fit into both ranks uh frizzell seems to have been on the outer and he's been a wee bit quiet towards the tail end of the year uh liam squire is perhaps another big one because it seems like from what the media said, he made himself available just a couple of days ago. Um, and he's been playing really well in the Mighty 10 Cup, and yet he's not made the cut. Although, interestingly, Steve Hansen said of him that he and Squire had agreed 
that he would make himself available if required as a replacement. Make himself available if required. Kind of implies that he didn't make himself available for the All Blacks, but I'm not sure. I guess more details would come out on that, but he should be first cab off the rank if anything happens to any of the Lucys. Uh, Josh Ioane, I suppose, but he was always going to be uh, a very long shot. He will be uh, next cab off the rank for sure if anything happens to Moonga or Barrett, you would imagine. But um, yeah, he's been in the All Blacks camp a wee bit, didn't get any minutes, but um, you know, they've kind of been building on him. Um, this year anyway so yeah that's the all black squad as i said some big names missed out most of the guys who were expected to make it made it um a few uh, bolters if anyone's a bolter i guess this year you'd probably say jacobson and reese but uh you know it's a it's an interesting squad you guys let me know your thoughts on the squad who do you think's unlucky to miss out as i said uh if you do want to win all blacks phone cases for your iphone uh, I'll be giving these away, I'll be drawing on September 1st, it's the last time I'm going to mention them in a video. Um, you have to comment on one of my other videos, I'll put a link in a pinned comment. Uh, if you do want to win one of these Otterbox uh, All Blacks official phone cases, um, but yeah, I'll put the details of that in a comment, so um, yeah, they're going to be going soon. But yeah, as always, you guys let me know your thoughts, and I will talk to you again soon. See you later.